So what kind of prayer is healing prayer? Well, what I've come to understand it to be is prayer that transforms us. Prayer that changes our perception of ourselves and others. It really shows us that we are not boxed in by the material circumstances that seem to bind us. Instead, we see ourselves more spiritually. We see that we are not humans having an occasional spiritual experience, nor are we spiritual beings having a human experience, as the saying goes now, doesn't it? What the lens of Christian science really helps us see is that we are spiritual individuals having a spiritual experience as the sons and daughters of God. And when we really catch sight of that, then there can be healing. And I love the way science and health explains this healing. It says, Consciousness constructs a better body when faith in matter has been conquered. And I had an experience of that, which I want to share. And I told you that I had sinusitis. But when I left university and I had been introduced to science and health, I had an attack of sinusitis. I recognized all the symptoms. And I had to decide whether to try pills again or try this new idea of prayer. Well, I decided to road test it. To, t <laughs> to test this idea of whether changing my mind could actually make a difference to my physiology, change my body. I'm not talking about the idea of visualization or, or positive thinking or even the mind-body medicine that's become much more popular over the last few decades. But this was, Christian science really encouraged me to seek a, a shift in my consciousness from a material perception of things to a spiritual perception of things. And again, I love the way it's articulated in Science and Health. It says, Become conscious for a single moment that life and intelligence are purely spiritual, neither in nor of matter, and the body will then utter no complaints. What an amazing thing. Become conscious for a single moment. Well, I had one of those moments. <laughs> I had been doing praying and I had been studying, but it was a moment when I was in a busy cafe in the center of London with a friend for a meal, and we were talking about everything from movies to music to metaphysics, when suddenly I just felt this overwhelming sense of love. It wasn't my love. It wasn't my friend's love. It wasn't anyone else's love. It was love, pure and simple. Divine love was there embracing me, embracing my friend, and embracing everyone in the cafe. I could feel it. And then I walked out into those London streets, and I was in an incredibly diverse neighborhood, and I felt this love loving every single person on those streets as I passed them by. And that was when it struck me. There were people on those streets that hated me, I knew that because I knew there were people in the, that area who were anti-Semitic. They hated me just for being Jewish. But that love was loving every single person, including every one of them. And when I saw that, the hardness in my own heart melted. Because I caught this wonderful glimpse of what Jesus actually means when he says we're to love our enemies as well as our friends and neighbors. He wasn't telling us to be some kind of doormat to evil. What he was telling us was he was alerting us to the most persistent and problematic foe that any of us ever has to face. And that is our own unspiritual thinking. What the Bible calls the carnal mind, those thoughts which would make us believe that we can be boxed in by our material circumstances. And by contrast, Jesus was showing what it looks like when instead of that, you identify yourselves with the love of divine love that cannot help but love because it is its very nature to love. And that evening, at least for that evening, I managed to identify myself that way as the child, the expression, the idea of that love. And the fear and the hatred that I'd lived with for far too long just left. It left. And that wasn't the only thing that left. At the same time, the sinusitis went as well. And it's never come back in three decades since then. 